Hey, so before we get going, the links to the original video and channel are down in the description below. So go ahead and make sure that you check them out. SCP-1230. Not wasting any time. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-1230. Object class, safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-1230 is to be kept in a secure storage locker at Site-12. Access requires minimum Clearance 2 with authorization and supervision by Clearance 3 research and security staff respectively. Supervising personnel are not to view SCP-1230's contents. Personnel accessing SCP-1230 are required to submit written accounts of dreams experienced within 48 hours of access. See Addendum 1230-A. SCP-1230 has been relocated to a secure storage locker behind the desk of Site-12's main library. Access is available to Clearance 2 personnel deemed to be in satisfactory psychological condition by Site psychiatric staff. Personnel accessing SCP-1230 must submit written accounts of their dreams within 48 hours of access and submit to follow-up psychological examination. Okay, so I thought this would kind of kind of be a person, right? Um, it had a picture of like looking like a wizard on the thumbnail, so I thought like this person would go maybe giving people like happy dreams or you know think kind of things like that. But it's a book. Uh, it seems to make you fall asleep. Hero is born. Not really sure where this is gonna go. Maybe it gives you abilities. Description. SCP-1230 is an unlabeled, green hardcover book with no apparent exceptional qualities. When SCP-1230 is opened, it displays the phrase, A hero is born on the first page viewed, while all other pages will be blank, resetting once the book is closed. This has no obvious effects at first, but upon falling asleep, the reader will dream of a fantasy world where they are the protagonist of a troubled land. Dreamers are completely aware, and all senses work just as well as when awake. Results vary depending on the imagination of the reader, and are mostly attuned to fantasies of adventure that the reader would enjoy. Okay, so as you know, with the Volgan specifically, since he always has all, uh, damn it, I can't point to it, all that information written over there, right? Um, I don't try to read past far where he's reading, that way it allows me some time to uh, formulate some assumptions or theories. And, okay, that's kind of why right here, for example, right, the book is very blank. So it's kind of meaning, or possibly has some meaning that you are going to create like your own adventure, right? A hero is born. Um, okay, so that's all good and done. That's why it's blank. Looks very, I guess, dull or maybe the whole don't judge a book by its cover type deal. And then once you go to this fantasy world, right, it also depends on your imagination. Are you really there? Like, is it? Not, are you actually getting transported, or are you just there in dream? I mean, obviously, he's gonna probably get into it, but I'm just making an assumption right now. Or is it also if you get hurt in there, does that pain? Like, for example, if you get your arm chopped off, kind of extreme, but <laughs> you get your arm chopped off in there, do you wake up with your arm chopped off? Right? I'm gonna say no, just because it says dream affecting, and the fact that it's safe, right? In the mind of the reader, those dreams have been documented to last anywhere from 45 seconds, see Experiment 1230-3, to 200 years, see Experiment 1230-5. But in reality, the reader will usually never be asleep longer than they would normally. Upon awaking, the reader is able to remember every aspect of their dream in detail. In SCP-1230-induced dreams, there is always a character called the Bookkeeper, SCP-1231, appearing as a bearded man in a green cloak who claims to be the personification of SCP-1230 himself. SCP-1231 has been reported to be very amicable and helpful towards dreamers, and has stated that it enjoys creating these fantasy scapes, and always tries to shape them in such a way that the dreamer garners the most entertainment out of it. It has expressed sorrow when the dream comes to an end, and asks the dreamer, please visit again soon. Kind of feels like a D&D type, right? Kind of like you got a, what, what, what would they call it, a dungeon master entity. I mean, does it feel like this entity or like this physical ma ma manifestation of it is trapped in there, right? And if you were, you know, you could understand why he would get lonely, right? Please visit again. 
discovery. In a small bookstore located in the shopkeeper had no recollection of owning the unlabeled book, but attempted to sell a story to local newspapers about a magical dream book. The foundation was able to dispel the story as a hoax, and SCP-1230 was confiscated. Experiment 123001. Dr. In an attempt to test its effective range, opened SCP-1230 and boarded a flight to his hometown of where he spent the night at a hotel. Upon his return, Dr. reported that SCP-1230 appeared in his dreams and explained that once you read A Hero Was Born, the dream is immediately implanted into your subconscious, after which SCP-1231 is able to manipulate it remotely. Dr. and expressed his appreciation for SCP-1231's cooperation. Experiment 1232 A camera was set up above SCP-1230 and, using a mechanical arm, the book was opened. All pages were revealed to be blank. It seems SCP-1230 is only effective when opened by beings that are able to have dreams. SCP-1231 explained to a subsequent dreamer that it is actually only able to affect beings with an imagination, and that most creatures such as animals would not be affected. Okay, so it says most creatures such as animals, so not every single one. So this means it could work with, which I mean, for a dog, for example, right? Do you think they have a, a, a imagination, right? I mean, technically to you, you they're you, they're like your whole world, right? Do you think the world of you? Um, but besides going off on a tangent, um, as far as working with other SCPs, I wonder how it would work with them. Kind of see what their story would be like. Because it, technically it's supposed to be in a way that would make it most enjoyable for them. For example, you got 6A2, what would be most enjoyable for them? Right? Killing everything that's living. SCP-049, curing the pestilence. Although I doubt that they would, <laughs> I doubt 6A2 would be cooperative and I, 049 maybe. Maybe not 100% sure. Experiment 123003. One D-Class was instructed to open the book, and after much reassurance that his experiences would only be dreams, ordered to immediately find a way to kill himself in the dream. The subject was asleep for merely 45 seconds before he awoke with a start in a nervous sweat. He reported being at the summit of a volcano called the Ashen Spire on a quest for Cladius the Blessed Blade. When asked how the subject knew the names, he stated, It's like I knew them all along. He apparently leapt into the volcano and felt an intense heat before awakening. D-Class requested permission to give it another go. Request was denied. Well, as you see from the SCP video from before this one, where I was completely wrong on something, even though it did sound pretty cool, and this one, I was right. All right? I believe I was right. I, I think I said that if you were to be in this dream, if you died, would you die in real life or have the same injuries? But since he just killed himself, the only thing that happened was that he woke up. And it's kind of what I said what would happen because it says dream affecting, not... Well, dream affecting was pretty much all I, all I was going off on. But, hey, you win some, you lose some. In this case, I won. Now we're tied for half. Experiment 123004. One D-Class was instructed to open the book and attempt to non-fatally injure himself in his dream. After six hours, D-Class awoke and reported that he was able to feel a numb sort of pain where it was never so intense as to be unbearable. He also reported meeting an elderly cloaked man who asked him why he was harming himself but thanked him for not immediately killing himself like that other rude fellow. <laughs> Ah, oh, the British. Rude fellow. <laughs> anyway, experiment 1230. Hold on. He felt a numb sort of pain. So could this be like a ghost pain? Kind of like um, uh, the closest similarity I can think of is like maybe Wolverine, right? Um, he heals, but sometimes he still feels pain in certain areas like where he got injured just because his mind is probably thinking like, hey, it was I, I was just injured here, even though there's no injury there. And this is like that other rude fellow. So this guy doesn't forget, right? And I wonder if, I don't know if he would actually, like, he, he, he looks like a wizard, all right? I wonder if he actually has the names of, like, the people who have opened the book inside here, right? Okay, oh, 05. 
Professor filed a request for access to SCP-1230 and was quickly permitted given his level 4 clearance. Staff members recalled that Professor almost visibly shaking with excitement and reported that Professor was an avid fan of tabletop and role-playing games. Surveillance shows that Professor opened the book, read the phrase, sat down beside the desk, and promptly fell asleep. Staff members were alarmed when Professor not awake after 15 hours and alerted security. The on-site medical staff were able to confirm that Professor is still alive and in good health. After approximately 24 hours since falling asleep, Professor began to move, reported to have slowly raised his head and looked around the room, appearing deeply confused. Security entered the room to ensure he was alright, to which he replied, Where am I? He was sent to medical where staff explained where and who he was. Several minutes later, Professor appeared to have regained his memory and excused himself to the restroom. When 15 minutes passed, Professor did not exit it. A nurse entered to find he had hanged himself with his belt. A scribbled message on the wall revealed his last words. I can't go back to this. Dr. went to ask SCP-1231 what had happened, but upon opening SCP-1230, all its pages were soaking wet with the same message on every page. I'm so sorry. I never intended for this to happen. I just wanted to make people happy. Repeated over and over. SCP-1230 remained in this state for three weeks, and its desk had to be wiped dry bi-weekly. In an attempt to communicate, Dr. placed a sticky note inside SCP-1230 with the statement, I'd like to talk to you if that's all right. The next morning, Dr. F held a report about a dream he had concerning SCP-1231. Okay, this just got quite, quite a bit more on the depressing side. Um, obviously, he's not trying to hurt anybody. He's just trying to give them a good time, right? Give them, I guess, give them like a little bit of escapism, right? Where they're the main protagonist, which technically we all are the main protagonist of our own lives, our own stories, right? That was a pretty cool connection I just made there. Uh, I'm sure I've heard someone else though, but <clears throat> I, th I think what was doing it for me right now, that's kind of like making me really feel it right here, was that when they found the book is now being soaked, because you see this uh, man now crying, right? Because he, he, he didn't intend for it to happen, he just wanted them to be happy, right? And obviously the guy who ended up hanging himself probably wasn't happy with just the world, maybe SAP life, or <laughs> foundation life and he just wanted a quick little escape and once he had it he didn't want to go back to it right but also it seems like for long durations of time if you are in there in that dream state it seems like you slowly start to forget about yourself and you start taking on that role of that hero that you are in that story if that makes sense this is report 123014 Upon falling asleep last night, I dreamt I was in a dark void. There was a street lamp, and underneath it was SCP-1231 sitting in a puddle. His cloak was visibly soaked as he was sobbing profusely. I remember our conversation. It went something like this. Bookkeeper? Is that you? My god, man. Where are we? The bookkeeper replied between sobs. I couldn't think of anything to make for a landscape. I replied, Bookkeeper, what happened that day? Why did Professor kill himself? We have to know your side of the story. The bookkeeper, still crying, wiping his eyes, responded. He had such an active imagination. I was able to create a vast and beautiful universe for him, and it was obvious that he had wanted a life like that for so long. He conquered foul beasts and rescued princesses. He built kingdoms and even raised a family. But he never wanted to leave. He delved so far into his fantasy world that I soon realized he preferred his dream over the real world. I reminded him that this was all merely an illusion, but he wouldn't listen to me. He stated that if he was ever forced to leave, that he would immediately end his life. I tried to keep him happy for as long as I could. 
So how, so time's obviously distorted in there, right? Like the fact that he was able to raise a family and go on all these adventures. But the guy was probably just depressed, man. Like in his real life. <clears throat> Again, really going back to the escapism. Maybe at a certain point, he even believed that that was re his reality. And then after some time being told, like, hey, you got to remember, this is still just like a dream. It's not really real. And then kind of, I, I feel like maybe when he finally did come back or was told it was an illusion and was reminded of this, maybe his mind kind of cracked and that was it. And then he makes that ultimatum, hey, you forced me to leave. I'm going to end it. Right? And I responded back to him, bookkeeper, how long was the dream? from his point of view. And after a long pause, he said, 200 years, Doctor. I did my best, but I could only hold on to him for 200 years. As sweet as dreams may be, eventually, we all have to wake up. I awoke almost immediately after. I can't believe he spent 200 years in his dream. I'm astounded by his foolishness, but it's such a shame to have lost a brilliant mind to his own delusions. Shortly after. I mean, if he did want to stay in there, what if it had a system? I mean, because obviously, in real life, your body would eventually need water, food. Well, you're getting your rest ready. But, I mean, going to the bathroom, you know, things like that, like daily things that you need to keep your body running. What if, uh, I think they said it in the beginning, though. I was going to say, like, what if you had, like, a little, I guess, what do, you, what do you want to call it, like, a save checkpoint? Um, if one person was using it. But then again, I do remember if it goes to another person, then it resets. Hmm. Because I was thinking that if, there, if it was possible to save certain checkpoints, that way, every time you go to sleep, you can just kind of go back in and out. But then again, I don't think that would be great for yourself mentally. Because then you may be at some point you're going to want to stay in there kind of like how this guy was. And I don't think that's necessarily healthy, mental-wise. After the report was filed, surveillance showed Dr. F slipping another small paper into SCP-1230. A few days later, SCP-1230 began showing its usual, a hero is born greeting once again. When asked what the note said, Dr. F declined to give a detailed comment, simply stating that he just gave it some friendly advice. Addendum 1230A. During initial testing, SCP-1231 asked Dreaming personnel if it could be relocated to an area with many books, preferably fiction, so that it could think of even better ways to construct its fantasy scapes. After numerous experiments were performed to ensure that SCP-1230 posed no threat, the request was accepted and SCP-1230 has been relocated to Site-12's library. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about that for a minute. Now, it's always good to get like a nice little SCP in, um, one that isn't necessarily so malicious in its nature, but it, what, it, it was a little sad. I mean, granted that um, we had the um, old man here, you know, actually get sad that somebody actually killed himself and that he was trying to do a great thing. I mean, some people could probably say that maybe he was enabling the guy in there, but <clears throat> he didn't want him to hurt himself, right, when he got out, so it's kind of a tough situation, um, and obviously when he got out, he ended up dying, so, I mean, well, killing himself, so, but I would say that the biggest thing, though, I am curious about, uh, because a lot of the things I was trying to assume kind of got answered, uh, pretty much th throughout the video, so, that was really great, but the only thing, obviously, what was the advice he gave him, right, that made him start going back into his, uh, hey, a hero is born, right, I, I don't know if it, that's just supposed to be left for your imagination. What do you think he said? Let me know down in the comments below. I mean, <laughs> to put it bluntly with myself, I would just say he probably gave him a note saying, hey, shit happens, right? Or maybe he was the one that suggested for him to be around all these other books to create even more landscapes, right? Hmm, I don't know. Um, it doesn't say here. I don't know if it would say somewhere else. If you do know, go ahead and let me know down below. But in any case, that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. It really does help me a lot. Hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I do upload. And hit that dislike button if you didn't like it. Leave me a little comment to me what it was. Until then, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.